Hey, what's up? This is Reed. You've probably seen less expensive smart lights out there lately, and you might be wondering, is there a reason to buy Philips Hue anymore? Especially when you hear from Hue's biggest fanboy, Paul Hibbert. Here is a list of all the reasons you should not buy Philips Hue's products. If you're not already following Paul, he has a great smart home channel that's very entertaining and helpful. And as you probably know, he does not like Philips Hue. But he brings up some good points. However, there's some things that he's not telling you. So let me show you the other side of the story. And just to be clear, I bought my Philips Hue smart bulbs with my own money, as well as many other smart lights around my house. And I know Philips Hue is far from perfect, but there's many reasons why people still love them. One of the benefits of a higher quality bulb like Philips Hue is their easy to use app with plenty of features. For example, you can specify the power on behavior. This is helpful when your power goes off and back on in the middle of the night. Other bulbs will default to on after a power outage. And this happened to me and it was so annoying because I couldn't turn off the lights right away because the router was booting back up. And yeah, it was at 3 a.m. Philips Hue is one of the only smart light brands that I know of that allows for this power on behavior. And after what happened to me, I would definitely think about paying a little bit more for my lights to never turn on in the middle of the night again. Another feature in the Hue app is the option to create routines that slowly fade on or off. They make it really easy to gradually wake up or fall asleep every day. This isn't revolutionary or anything, but they make it really easy to set up in the app. I showed Hue Sync in a video recently, and even though it may not be for everyone, it's available for free on your computer if you want to use it with your Hue lights. Yes, there are less expensive bulbs out there, and I've tried out a few of them, but many are missing these extra features, so keep that in mind. One of my favorite things about Philips Hue is the many accessories available, like motion sensors and switches. For example, smart bulbs are usually not family friendly because they might not know how to control them. Reed, how do you turn off this light? Oh, it's easy. You can just use the app, the scene and smart things. You can use the brilliant switch. You can use the echo device. You can use the Nest Hub Max. The Hue dimmer switch is a great solution that anyone can use to easily control the lights. There are other switches and buttons that you can use for different smart lights. However, the Hue dimmer switch just makes it easy. Also, other companies have made some Hue compatible accessories as well. The Lutron Aurora blocks light switches and works as a button and dimmer for your Hue lights. Just like accessories can make it easy to use the lights, so does having all the lights in one platform. Typically, when you go the route of less expensive smart lights, you might have different brands. Or if you're like me, dozens of brands. Maybe you have indoor lights from one company and outdoor lights from another. This can work fine, but some people prefer to stick with Philips Hue because they can control many different types of lights in one place. There's another really important feature of the Philips Hue bulbs. Oh, the Zigbee. As you may know, Hue bulbs don't use Wi-Fi, but communicate with their bridge using Zigbee. I've run into many connectivity problems with Wi-Fi lights, but never any issues with Hue. They're very reliable, and Zigbee is a big reason for that. Yes, there are other Zigbee bulbs like Sengled. They use a hub like SmartThings and have a reliable connection similar to Hue. They're actually a good, affordable alternative to Hue. Oh, by the way, speaking of the Hue bridge, Hue did just kill off the first gen bridge recently, which is unfortunate. Luckily, the bulbs still work with the second gen bridge, and if you buy tech a lot, you know that it doesn't last forever. The hub was released over eight years ago, and I would say that it lived a pretty good life. Some got discounts to upgrade to the second gen hub, but I'm not defending Hue in any way. I just think that fears of the second gen hub being discontinued sometime in the future isn't a valid reason to not get into the Hue ecosystem. The last thing that I want to mention is that Philips Hue is very compatible with other smart home products. You know when a new mobile app comes out that they typically focus on iOS at first? That's kind of how it is with Hue. For example, one of the first smart lights to work with the brilliant light switch was Philips Hue. If you look at smart lights compatible with the Harmony Hub, you guessed it, it's Philips Hue and a few others. Basically, no matter how you want to build your smart home, if you go with Hue, then there's a high chance it will be compatible. So those are a few reasons why I think people are still buying Philips Hue right now. Of course, there are plenty of problems as well, 
and Paul Hibbert goes into a lot more detail than what those are in his video. Since we have different opinions on this, we've been messaging back and forth to coordinate these videos so that you can see both sides. And I'll link his video down in the description and you should go check it out. I agree with most things he mentions, like the bulbs not having high saturation or brightness, especially for the price. And Hue should definitely try to be more affordable. However, even with all the negatives of Philips Hue, I still think they are more than just an expensive smart bulb and may be worth getting for some people. It's like choosing Apple over Android. There's nothing wrong with choosing Apple, but some people just don't prefer it. What do you guys think? Did you go with Philips Hue? And if so, do you like them? Or did you choose something else? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time. Alexa, what is afternoon tea? First stop the bad British accent, and second you will never be as cool as Paul Hibbert. <laughs>